Firebase storage tutorial. Today we are going to learn how to save images inside an iOS application. Before we dive into that, let me remind you about rebelloper.com slash mentoring, where you can meet me on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. I can teach you about iOS, Swift, Swift UI. So go ahead and check it out, rebelloper.com slash mentoring. So today uh, we are going to continue in the series of uh, Firebase. Here is our project. Go ahead and check out the link in the description for the other ones. Previously, I talked about uh, Firestore. Today we are going to store some images like larger files, not just small bits of data like the database with Firestore. We are going to store images. Therefore, we need to have a Firebase's Firestore enabled. So if you haven't already done so, make sure that you add the package dependencies. You know, uh, you get, go ahead and check out the link in the description for, you know, the whole playlist, how I did this. And if you already done this and uh, maybe you did not add Firebase storage, here's what you have to do. Go to your target and the scroll down and under frameworks, libraries and embedded content, just click on the plus button and just select Firebase storage. I have already added it. It's right over here. So, so it's, it's uh, okay. Also, make sure that you enable that on your Firebase dashboard. So today we are going to um, write some code, actually not just a little bit of code, a lot of code uh, to uh, make managing, uh, like uploading uh, data, most specifically UI images into the Firebase storage, a breeze, like just one line of code. So. Uh, Previously, we talked about a Firestore context. Go ahead and check out the video uh, uh, below in the link, of course, in the playlist. And today we are going to create a storage context. So uh, storage context, there we go. And uh, we are going to import Swift UI over here and also, of course, Firebase storage. So fi Firebase storage. Now, this will be a struct. And uh, again, it's going to be called storage context. And uh, first we are going to create a function that is going to store the data. Basically this is the touch point with the Firebase storage API. Otherwise we are going to do a little bit more uh, uh, functionality to make ourselves, uh, our lives easy uh, uh, with uploading data. So yeah. With Firebase storage, you upload actually data. It's not a UI image or a video file, it's a data. So let's create a static function that does exactly that. So save data, static func, uh, save data of type data. And uh, we are going to uh, add in here the folder path. Now you can just have subfolders with a, a slash, you know, it's just a sim string, so folder path and that is a string and uh, we need a completion. Why do we need a completion and what does this completion, what will this completion do? So it will be an escaping completion. There we go. And this will actually give us back the URL to that data because once we got that URL, you want to store it on the Firestore database. You are not storing all of these large files on the Firestore database. You're storing small bits of data. The large files will be stored under the storage part, grab their URL and store it on the uh, Firestore. So uh, right over here, I'm just going to add a result type. Uh, it's really convenient because I can just have an optional URL. Yeah, maybe you are not going to get back a URL and an error if there will be an error. Now, our file that we are storing on the storage will need some sort of a name and it has to be unique. Therefore, I'm just going to have a UUID. So let file name uh, equals UUID, UUID uh, dot UUID string. Okay, so we got our unique file. Now we need to create a reference. Uh, let reference. This is where we are going to store our data. It's at the storage dot storage and then dot a reference and then you want to, you know, set the folder path and that's done with the child and then just add the folder path and then you add another child which will have the file name. And this is kind of the whole reference where we want to put our data. And that's what we are going to do next. We just call reference dot 
output a data and uh, we are going to choose uh, this one with the completion so that would be our data and then the completion we don't care about the metadata uh, all we care about if we got any errors uh, if we do have any errors we want to of course complete with a failure and propagate that error up the completion so uh, we say if a let error uh, then we are going to say completion and dot failure and just uh, add that error in. Also, we want to uh, return. We don't want to move forward uh, with our code. If we don't have any errors, then we want to grab the download URL. And we can get that from the reference. So download URL. We're going to use, well, either we'll do, let's just use this one, whatever, uh, whatever you'd like. Uh, we're going to get back an optional URL. The other one was, was with, uh, well, actually, this is much more convenient. Let's choose the one, the one with the result type because now I can just move the completion all the way up. So we just go completion. Otherwise, you would just have to check for the error like we did right over here. Let's see. Uh, oh, it is of a void. Let's just have void. Why not? Void is also uh, a great over there. Uh, well, let's see what's going on over here. So result URL. Oh. Uh, this should not be an optional. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, in some cases, uh, we want to either return a nil value for the URL if we don't have one, but for this case, it's just fine. So that is how we get back our URL for saving data. But as I told you at the beginning of this tutorial, we don't actually want to store data. We want to store, we want to upload images. And most particularly UI images. You can do this for MS image if you choose to. Um, yeah, it's, it's the same, kind of the same code. So uh, let's create our static function for the image. Let me just paste that in there. And instead of save data, we are going to save an image. Image, there we go. It will be a UI image. Uh, the folder path, and also right over here, we are going to add a compression quality. And just a second. I want to add those two uh, 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 brackets. So right over here, compression with uh, two S, S is compression quality, and that will be a CG float, and a default value is one, so no compression. Why do we need this compression quality? Well, because we are going to get the data from that UI image. So uh, let's do that in a guard statement. So guard uh, let uh, data equals uh, image uh, JPEG data with a compression quality. Here you go. We just add the compression quality. Otherwise, we uh, want to return. And uh, yeah, basically, uh, we don't want to uh, do anything else. If we have our data, then we can save the image with the folder path and compression quality. So we can use uh, this one. So uh, UI image, uh, that is, well, actually save the data, sorry. This is the same one, save the data, save data with a pro, uh, folder path and compression quality. So data, folder path, and then comp uh, a completion. There we go. You know, the one that we had right over here, we started off with. Okay, this is how we save an image. But what if we want to delete one? Well, uh, let's create that static function. Func. Let me move ourselves all the way up here. Delete. And uh, we want to delete at a certain URL. This is how we uh, get to that file and just then delete it. So delete at URL. And that will be a string because it's not, we are not going to add an actual URL. We are storing strings on the Firestore database. Therefore, we should just uh, use uh, uh, URLs as strings. And then on the completion, completion, uh, come on. And of course it will be escaping. And we are going to uh, get a, a back, a Boolean, a result, a Boolean or an error. Well, actually, if I uh, think of it again, we should just basically get back an optional error. So if we are not going to get back any errors, then it will be just fine. Now, uh, let's see over there. Delete. Well, we want to get a reference for that URL. So let reference equals 
storage, uh, not storage reference, but storage.storage, and then a reference, a reference for a URL. Of course, it's string, so it's really convenient. We just pass along that string. And now we just grab that reference, reference, and then say delete and with a completion. And as you can see, uh, it's, uh, the completion is any error, optional, and then a void. Let me just have void also here. So we can just have uh, uh, this, uh, and uh, this uh, also could be, let me just uh, uh, take a look at the actual completion so I can just check it out. Yeah, it's an optional one, so uh, let's do uh, that on our end too. Let me just move that into an optional one. Okay, and set it to nil, why not? And then just say completion. And that's it, it's as simple as that. Let me just see, call, oh, we don't have to have the escaping if we are setting its default value to nil. Really, really straightforward, right? So we, this is how we can delete. Now, um, yeah, you can save, delete those images or data, but what if we have a profile picture? then we want to delete actually first the old profile picture and then save this new one. Furthermore, if this is the first one, you know, there is nothing to delete, then we just want to save. So how do we do that? Well, we are going to create a new function and it's going to be called handle image change. So static uh, func handle image change. There we go. And we need the new image of UI image uh, at the folder path, folder path, again, a string. So where should we uh, save, upload uh, this? Then a compression, call it compression quality, uh, CG float uh, of 1.0. Again, you just pass it along to the save value, save function. And then we need an old uh, image URL that is going to be a string. Now, if we have an old image URL, it you know we are going to delete it. If we don't have an actually old image URL, then this will be, when we are calling it, this function, actually an empty string. Uh, and we are going to handle that. So old image URL, we have to provide it anyways. And then we have the completion, uh, and it will be just, again, a, a, a result of uh, uh, URL and error. Let me just paste that in there. Okay, and then those two brackets. So we are done with the properties. Now let's do this. First of all, we want to make sure that this old image URL is actually a URL. If it isn't, then we know that there is no image, uh, old image, therefore we could just save. So let's do that first. So guard, uh, old image URL contains, contains uh, HTTPS, if it doesn't contain HTTPS, then we could just simply save. So save uh, the image of the folder path and we're just going to complete, you know, just pass along the new image, folder path, compression quality, and then the completion. And then of course we want to return because we don't want to uh, move along with the code that I'm going to type out here. Now, if we do have an old image URL, then we first have to delete. So delete uh, uh, at the URL with the completion. So delete, uh, we are going to have the string of old image URL and the completion. Well, this is a, a, a stranger one because this is just error, not the actual URL that we have right over here. So let's have uh, this error. And then we say, if let error, then we are going to say completion dot failure and just pass along that error and then a return. Otherwise, if there is no error, we are just going to say completion dot success and uh, with, uh, oh, oh, sorry about that. Uh, we delete and then we are going to not just 
complete with the URL? Because what is the URL? Well, we are going to actually save the image again. So I'm just going to copy this one line out and then use the completion over here. So yeah, we deleted it and then we are going to delete the old value, old image, and then we are going to save it. And it's as simple as that. Now, this is fine uh, if you are um, accustomed to completions, uh, which you should be if you are a coder for uh, more than a few years. But I prefer async away. You know, completions are fine, but you know, you have completion in constant completion. It is so convoluted, it's so much uh, extra code. I like async away combined with throwing functionality. So let's create a handle image change uh, asynchronous throwing function. I'm going to copy all of this out because, you know, actually the name could be the same. Uh, remove the completion part and then append. Let me just move this a little bit up so we can see async and throws. And we are going to return a URL. And that's it. We are going to throw the error and then uh, if there are no errors, we are going to return a URL asynchronously. It's really, really powerful. Now, how can we actually create an asynchronous throwing function from the completion? Well, with the um, with checked throwing continuation. There is also a with checked continuation. Uh, if you uh, don't really care about throwing errors, let me just type that out. So try await because it's an asynchronous throwing function uh, with uh, checked either continuation or throwing continuation. This will be the later because we are going to throw the errors. We are this, consider this as kind of a mirror of a completion and you will see why in just a second. So continuation and then we call that con, uh, completion, uh, that function with the completion. So handle image change with the compression quality and all of that. So we just pass along the parameters. So new image, folder path, compression quality, old image URL. And right over here, under the result, on the completion, we just hit return and we get back the result, of course. And then we say continuation dot. And there's one with returning and throwing if you are not using actual results, but we are. So we are just going to say resume with that result. Result. And it's as simple as that. Now you have an asynchronous throwing function to handle the image change. Now you can uh, create the one for the save data, save image, uh, also for the delete. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you uh, prefer asynchronous, this is how you want to do it. And why, again, why do we need this URL? Because we are going to save that URL on the Firestore database. And that video is either in the link in the description where you can find the playlist and it's the previous video or right over here. So go ahead and check it out.